It's an 8.9 on starting on page 493. We have a lot to do today and I need to try to keep my video short. So let's move along quickly. We're on finding or problem solving, finding the whole group using unit fractions. If you remember, unit fractions always have a numerator of one, like one half or one eighth or one one hundredth, okay? Always a numerator of one. And we're going to draw a diagram or picture to help us solve our problems. Let's get started. Cameron has four clownfish in his fish tank. One third of the fish are clownfish. How many fish does he have? All right, I need to find blank are in Cameron's fish tank. The question up there, how many fish? We need to find how many fish are in that tank, okay? We know he has four clownfish, there we go. And we also know which fraction of them are clownfish, one third. So one third of his fish are clownfish. And to do that, to solve this rather, we're going to draw a diagram. Or if you want to write picture, you sure can. They're the same thing. Okay. The denominator in one third, right there, tells you how, or that there are equal groups, three equal groups. So we're going to draw three circles to show those three equal parts. One, sorry about that, two, and three. We have three equal groups because of the denominator of three, one third tells us three equal groups. And since there are four fish, are one third of the whole group, we're going to draw four counters in the first circle. One, two, three, four. And you can draw little circles if you want. Just want to write the number four, you can do that too. Since there are four counters in the first circle, we're going to draw four and the others. So let's pretend that those red markers are for the clownfish, the other four are some other kind of fish, and again, some other kind of fish. So now we need to find the total number of counters. Well, we have three groups, one, two, three. We have three groups of, multiplication sign groups of, right? Four. And three groups of four, or three times four, equals 12. So Cameron has 12 fish in his fish tank. All right, let's go on to the next page. I know we have two gray rabbits, and I also know that one-eighth of the rabbits at the pet store are gray. So I'm just going to write one-eighth are gray. How will I use the information? We're going to draw a diagram or picture, either one. They both mean the same thing. Okay, let's slide on over. Now we get to solve the problem. Okay, if you remember, we have one eighth of them are gray. And my denominator is eight. That denominator tells me how many equal groups we have. We have eight equal groups. So I need to draw eight groups over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now I also know that we have two gray rabbits. So that means those two gray, rabbit, gray rabbits, excuse me, I'm gonna put G for gray those two gray rabbits go in one group. Since I have a group of two here, the rest of them all need to be grouped in twos. Okay, so I can draw circles in, or what I like to do is just write the number two in. Okay, so you can draw circles if you want. All right, now we can figure out how many rabbits there are. There are two gray rabbits, and then we have four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 rabbits total, okay? 
or I could write the multiplication problem. We have eight groups of two, and that equals 16. Okay, so 16 rabbits is our answer. And again, if this still isn't making sense, that's okay, because we have a lot more practice. Because we have so much practice to do, I am going to skip these two today. And I'm going to go to the next page, which is our share and show page. Lots of examples to work through. But before we work through those examples, let's look at some great strategies. Circle your question, underline important facts. You don't have to circle or underline, but underline question if you want to, circle facts if you want to. Somehow mark them because they're important. Okay, Here's a great one. I like this. Put the problem in your own words. Just restate it so it makes sense to you. And as we always talk about, choose a strategy that you know, choose a strategy that works for you. Okay, let's look at number one. Lily has three dog toys that are red. One fourth of all her toys are red. And then the big question, how many dog toys does she have? So first we need to know how many circles are we going to draw? And again, we look at our fraction. One fourth. The denominator tells us how many equal groups. So the denominator is four. That means we draw four circles. And we draw four circles to show four equal parts. So one, two, three, four. All right, we're gonna slide down here. It says next, draw blank toys in the circles. Well, there are three dog toys, so there need to be three dog toys in that first circle. Dog toy, dog toy, dog toy. Okay, so those, even though I drew them in blue, those are supposed to be our red dog toys. The rest of the dog toys are not red, so different color for me. You can just use regular pencil if you want. But since we had three in that first one, we need to have three in all the others. Okay, so we drew three dot toys in um, one circle, or even the first circle. I'm going to put first in the first. We drew three toys in the first circle since each circle represents the number of red toys. Well, I guess maybe not each, but that circle. So we could even erase that one instead of that, instead of each. I probably should put since that circle represents the number of red toys. Again, that's supposed to be my red toys, right? Even though they're blue. Okay. Last, draw three toys in each of the remaining circles to find the total number of toys. We have three plus three plus three plus three. Or four groups of three. And that equals 12. Lily has 12 dog toys. Next question, what if Lily has four toys that are red, okay? We still have one-fourth of her toys are red. So still one-fourth, meaning then we have four circles. One-fourth, four circles. Only this time, and I'm gonna draw it correctly, she has one, two, three, four toys that are red. Since I drew four in this circle, I need to draw four in the other circles. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. We have a total of four groups of four toys in each group, and that equals 16. So this time she would have 16 toys instead of the 12. Let's have another example. The pet store sells bags of pet food. There are four bags of cat food. 
one-sixth of the bags of food are cat food. How many bags of pet food does the store have? Okay, again, my fraction right there, one-sixth. The denominator tells us how many groups. The denominator is six, so we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six groups. We have four bags of cat food, so I'm gonna draw my four bags here. One, two, three, four, those are cat food. And then we have other food. Maybe it's dog food, maybe it's fish food. Does fish food come in bags? I don't know. Maybe you have giraffe food, maybe you have pet rock food, and, I don't know, some other kind of food, human food, who knows, okay? So now we can figure out how much, oh, I guess it was all pet food. Now we can figure out how much pet food there is in all. We count up our groups. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six groups of four, four in each group. And that equals 24. So then we have 24 bags of pet food, 24 bags. Okay, let's look at our last question. We'll try to get through it. Same strategy though. Underline or circle important information. Rachel owns two parakeets. One fourth of all her birds are parakeets. She has a lot of birds. How many total birds does she have? Okay, again, our fraction was one fourth. The denominator four tells us how many equal groups to make. One, two, three, four. Rachel owns two parakeets. I'm going to put those in green. So there are my two parakeets. And then she had a bunch of other birds. Since there were two in the first group, two in every other group. Okay. And then we count up our groups. We have one two, three, four groups of two. Four times two equals eight. She has eight birds. I just had to look at what the question was. The question asked how many birds does she have? Eight birds. All right, boys and girls, that's a lot to know. This is a difficult concept. If you get confused, come back to these first three pages. It will definitely help you problem solve throughout your assignment today. Persevere. It might get difficult, but persevere. If you make mistakes, that's okay. That's when, we, that's when we learn. We learn from our mistakes. If you need assistance, of course I will help you. And do your best, boys and girls. As always, this is Mr. P, and I am out.